This video is the key to the formative assessment for Unit 1, Skill 3 on the trig derivative rules. Uh, as we saw in class, these derivative rules are going to work in conjunction with the rules we saw in Objective 2, product rule, power rule, quotient rule, etc. So right off the bat here, we see a problem that involves cosine of x, but the function as a whole is a product rule problem, 3x squared times cosine x. So I'm going to apply my typical product rule here, which states, take the derivative of the first expression, which is 6x, multiply it by the second expression, which is cosine of x, and add to that the first expression times the derivative of the second expression. And what I learned in class is that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I get the following answer there. At level 3 we see the common pattern of a taking the rule, in this case the trig rules, and embedding it within the symbolic representation. Once again I have a problem that involves a product and it asks me for a tangent line. I know tangent being that keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and first apply the term tangent which means to take a derivative. And by the product rule, derivative of the first term times second plus derivative of the second term, and I learned that the derivative of tangent was secant squared times h of x, which is my first term there. Now, this particular problem stated that it wants that tangent line at x equals pi. And I know anytime I see tangent line, I'm thinking I need three things. x-coordinate, given. y-coordinate, I'll find it. And slope, I'm about to find it. So f prime of pi is equal to h prime of pi. The tangent of pi, uh, what's the tangent of pi again? Well, tangent of 0 is 0. Uh, the period of tangent is pi units. It goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So pi is analogous to 0 in terms of the periodicity of the function. So tangent of pi is equal to 0. Another way you could think about that, tangent is y over x. Pi is 180 degrees. At 180 degrees, the y-coordinate is 0, and the x-coordinate is negative 1. Secant of pi. Well, the cosine of pi, the x-coordinate is negative 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1 and negative 1 squared is positive 1. So the secant of pi is, or excuse me, the secant squared of pi is going to be 1. And then I have h of pi. Well, I'm told h of pi is equal to pi over 2. So now to finish, h prime of pi is negative pi from the information above, times 0, plus 1 times pi over 2. Final answer, Pi over 2. I still need a y coordinate, which I'm going to find from the original function. f of pi is equal to h of pi times tangent of pi, but this just became trivial because we already said the tangent of pi is equal to 0. So my y coordinate is 0. Final answer to this question y minus 0 equals pi over 2 times x minus pi. Okay, terrific. Let's now move to level 4, which is going to be in the next page there. For the level 4 here, um, we see that we get more complicated. We are taking advantage of the fact that this is a piecewise function, and the question wants us to make this differentiable. Now, we know that differentiability implies continuity, now, we've seen these questions before. We know that we are going to use both facts here to solve for a and b. So first, I'm going to take advantage of the continuous part. Uh, in order for these to be continuous, the limit as I approach from the left has to be equal to the limit I approach from the right. From the left of 2 pi, or excuse me, from the left of pi over 2, I get 2 times a times pi over 2 minus b has to be equal to the cosine of pi over 2 plus 
b times x, which will be b times pi over 2. So from the continuity piece, I'm going to get it when I clean it up. Uh, a pi minus b, the cosine of pi over 2 is equal to uh, 0, plus b pi over 2. So I get a equals... Uh, b plus b pi over 2, all of that divided by pi. Now I need to go ahead and address the differentiability piece. In order for these to be differentiable, then the derivative from the left has to be equal to the derivative from the right. The derivative from the left is 2a. The derivative from the right is the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of x, plus b, and since I'm still working about pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is uh, 1, so negative 1 plus b. Now, don't forget, I've already solved previously for a in this question, so I'm going to replace a with what it is equal to. So I'm going to get 2 times a, b pi over 2, divided by pi, equals negative 1 plus b, I'm going to distribute the 2, so I get 2b plus b pi, all that over pi, equals negative 1 plus b. And now I'm going to multiply through by pi, giving me 2b plus b pi equals negative pi plus b pi. And now I notice I have b pi on both sides, so they cancel. So I have b equals negative pi over 2. So now that I know what b is equal to, I can go back up here to a and replace b. So a equals b, negative pi over 2, plus negative pi over 2 times pi over 2, all that over pi. So let's see what I now have. Uh, well, the reality is there's no real benefit to me simplifying this. Um, as I've mentioned in class many times, all that can happen through the simplification is bad things. So technically, I have my answer. If I did want to simplify because I just really love it, I would get negative one-half. Then I would get um, minus pi over 4. And that finishes this video.